Thank you. Um, I would like to also introduce my co-author, Demeter Antoff. Demeter and I um, both work at the Cambridge Group. And um, by way of introduction, the, the Cambridge Group is a, a management consulting firm. We're based in Chicago. And the work that we do is um, helping clients develop strategies for growing. So our, our clients tend to be um, B2C companies, business to consumer companies. So consumer packaging companies selling everything from sun care products to beverages, um, retail clients, and uh, financial services clients. Um, and I've been using CART and data mining in general for about six years. I've only been at the Cambridge Group for four years. Um, before I joined the Cambridge Group, I was an academic economist for several years. I'm trained as an econometrician, so I grew up um, being taught about um, how to, first of all, how to think about causation when, when doing econometrics, but also thinking about parametric models as the, the paradigm for, for um, using econometrics. And I was introduced to CART and started using CART about six years ago when I was doing uh, research on the determinants of welfare policy um, and wel welfare pol policy preference in the United States. And there were some theories uh, um, among economists that were competing with one another and the theories had, had implications for pretty complex interactions among demographic variables that really couldn't be handled by kind of classical econometric models. And so we turned to CART as a method for exploring and testing these theories. Um, and then about four years ago, I moved over into management consulting, which is a very different type of work. But what I focused on at the Cambridge Group is um, we do a lot of primary consumer research. And so I focused on building a group of people who apply more sophisticated econometric and statistical tools to the work that we do than you would normally find among consultants. And so Demeter and I are, are in that group. Um, and when we, the, the way that we um, came to the point of using CART again in this context was we do a lot of, as part of our primary consumer research and part of the development of strategies, we do a lot of consumer segmentation in our work. So this is, a, this is an example from the beverage category, and specifically beer. So what we do for clients, it, one of the things we do for clients, is we will, we will segment a, a market of consumers. Um, and you can segment consumers in lots of different ways. But the, way that we, the primary way that we tend to think about it is in terms of their, their motivations or their values that drive purchase decisions in a category. So across the top, you see um, five different segments that correspond to, to beer drinking segments. So these are people who drink beer. Experimenters, trendsetters, aspirers, loyalists, sippers. And the names are, are um, deliberately generic, because this is a disguised example. And then we also might, we, so we might segment consumers among, in terms of their, their motivations for drinking beer, their taste preferences for drinking beer. So that's that second red column, craft style and full body, sweet and light, light and full body, sweet and light. And those two ways of segmenting consumers can be overlapping. Another way, way that, we consume, that we segment consumers is in terms of their need states. And this is something like usage occasions. What, why, what, for what are they are drinking beer? What is the occasion? And so there's some fun things there like hanging out and romance and proving myself. So it can it can, that can be a pretty interesting way of, un, of understanding reasons for consumers um, drinking beer or, or consuming some other type of category. What we do with this is identify for clients, first of all, you know, kind of size these, the, these different groupings of consumers, because all of these consumers will have not just preferences and, and motivations, but actual purchase behavior. So you can, you can size these segments and say, how big are they in terms of value in the market, um, projected growth, where's the client, where's the client getting their revenue and their profit today. So for this client, their current strength was among these kind of loyalists that drink, um, kind of hanging out when they're watching sports. It's kind of classic American beer. Their growth opportunity was more in the kind of newer, smaller, but faster growing segments among experimenters, trendsetters, aspirers um, that are the more kind of craft and, and microbrewery beers. So this is just a, a, a brief example of, of how we use um, segmentation in our, in our client work. Now, 
Segments are typically constructed using cluster analysis, which in, we, that's how we construct our segments. Um, and clusters, for those of you who aren't as familiar with it, cl clusters are, th they're, it, it's another statistical technique for grouping consumers according to a set of variables. So looking for groups of consumers that are as homogenous as possible within a cluster, and then the cluster should also be constructed so that the clusters are as different from one another as possible. And there's lots of different ways of doing it. We use, we use a, a traditional cluster analysis technique. But the point is, is that you then have this group of, cl this group of clusters, and these cl the cluster identification or classification is a highly nonlinear um, function of the input variables. So these input variables could be, again, motivations or behaviors or usage occasions. Um, yeah. Um, in this example, no, but you could, yeah, don't, don't worry about, yeah, just, they're just categories, so they're not ordered, if that's your question. Um, so, so, it, so, you know, so far what I've described to you is, is, is not that different from what other, um, what other management consulting companies or even market research companies do for clients in terms of a segmentation. Um, but, what, what we then run into with, with our clients and what we try to provide to our clients is not just an identification of, you know, this very interesting kind of landscape of here are your consumers and here's how, to, here's how they group into different categories and here's where your growth opportunity is. But we also need to be able to provide our clients with some way of actually going after that opportunity. And an important um, uh, aspect of that or contribution to that is something that's called typing tools. So typing tools, again, are used, they're used widely across the market research community. Um, and they're used in lots of different ways, including ongoing research that goes beyond, say, our, in our initial work with a client. Um, it can be used in some situations where a client actually has a customer database and they want to find different segments of consumers within that database. Um, and so, so broadly speaking, these typing tools are our algorithms for predicting membership of consumers in, in a segment. Um, and you, when we do this, oftentimes when we do an, an initial segmentation, we might use a hundred variables in that segmentation. But if you're thinking about ongoing research or we're thinking about using um, a, a much shorter um, ongoing survey with, it, with customers or something like that, you can't ask people a hundred questions. You can maybe ask people ten questions. Um, and so the typing tools tend to use a much smaller set of variables than the original set of variables. And that's where the interesting problem comes into play because that now we're building a model, we're trying to classify people into segments, and we can't use the full set of variables, so there's gonna be, there's gonna be some error. And again, these clusters are highly nonlinear uh, functions of these variables that go into them. And so one thing that's a little bit surprising then if we go and we look at what's used today as kind of a standard technique is that the standard technique is, um, is a, is a, it's, a param, it's a parametric mo econometric model, but, and, but it's also um, not, n not very nonlinear. Non so the, the tool that tends to be used is, is discriminant analysis, and I won't talk very much about, about that, because that's not the focus of this talk. But what I, what I will say is that um, it's a parametric model. It's, it's a, it's, um, it assumes normality of the, independent, of the distribution of the independent variables. And, um, and in short, what we, what we started to run into was problems where the typing tools were just not working very well. This, this, is, this technique is used across the industry. It's, it's standard, it's automated, it's really easy, it's practically free to, to create one of these typing tools. It, co it takes almost not, not zero of somebody's time to do it, zero time to do it. But, um, we kept running into problems with our clients, especially if we were doing ongoing work with a client where we would create a segmentation and then the typing tools just didn't work. We, and when I say don't work, what I mean is, let's say we, we were gonna do some qualitative research, we were gonna do some focus groups, and we needed to find somebody from a, target, from a target segment of consumers. We would have this typing tool that a supplier had provided to us, and we would start the recruiting for the focus groups, and we would be getting people who just didn't match 
our intuition and our understanding of these target segments. So that's what I mean when I say it wasn't working. 